Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. It is time for us to get to work. Uh, we're going through a concept builder on physics classroom today uh, in the topic work and energy. And the title of this concept builder is work. So let's get to work. Before I confuse this anymore, let's make sure this button works. Ah, now the last time I checked the definition of work in a dictionary, there were 56 different definitions. So let's be very clear that we are talking about one particular definition of the word work, um, and that is the definition that a force acting, or which means pushing or pulling through a distance. Okay, so we see the equation is work equals force times distance. If we push on something and it moves, then we've got some work being done. In particular, um, that work will cause a ch an object to change its energy, the energy of an object to change. So if we push an object and it moves the same direction we're pushing it, that's positive work. Once again, if we push an object and it moves the same direction we're pushing it, that's positive work, and that'll make the energy of the object increase. However, if we, have, if we push on something while it's moving the opposite direction, that will cause negative work, which is going to make the energy of the object decrease. So if something's coming at us, it's moving towards us, and we push against its motion, we're going to make it come to a stop, for example, which takes energy away from it. Let's get to a couple examples. So there's three uh, levels or three trophies on this concept builder. The first one is titled positive, negative, or zero work. They abbreviate that with the plus, minus, and zero signs. And your goal in this concept builder is just to state, is the work positive, is the work negative, or is there no work being done? Ah, forgot to mention, if you have a situation where the force is pushing one way and it's moving perpendicular to that, there is no work done. It has to do with the trigonometry of how it works, dot products, all that. We don't need to get into that, okay? But if the force is perpendicular to the displacement, then there is no work being done. We actually won't see that here. We just won't see, we'll see the object not moving. Okay. The... Um, uh, here we have a baseball being thrown upwards. So the baseball starts out, uh, the baseball is moving upwards, and the force is pushing it upwards. That means they're going the same direction. So that is a positive, um, a positive force. A helicopter is rising through the air at constant velocity through the air. It's rising at constant velocity through the air. It's moving upward. It's being pushed upward by the air is the blade spin, and so that is going to be positive work, okay? By the way, we can also see in both of these situations, the energy of the baseball is increasing as it's being thrown. The gravitational potential energy of the helicopter is increasing as it rises through the air. That's the effect of our positive work, our force pushing in the same direction as our displacement. Okay, here we see Humpty Dumpty just landed on some grass. Oh, thank goodness it was grass because that increased the time of impact. And so there wasn't enough impact force to break his shell. Whew. So the force on Humpty Dumpty is up. The grass is pushing up on Humpty Dumpty. But Humpty Dumpty is moving down as he slows down to a stop. Those are in opposite directions. So we have a negative force here. We also can see that the energy of Humpty Dumpty is decreasing. He was going pretty fast, had a lot of kinetic energy, and now he will be stopped and have no kinetic energy. Finally, we have a car driving down a hill apply, 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 applies its brakes. So the displacement is down the hill. The force is up the hill to make it stop. And so that will be in opposite direction. So we have a negative force. We can double check and see that the car was moving and now it's going to be coming to a stop. Not only that, it did have potential energy, gravitational potential energy because it's coming downhill and it now doesn't have that either. So uh, the energy, the mechanical energy has definitely decreased. Now there, we could have had an example where something didn't move. For example, if I push on a wall, if I push on a wall, that would create no work, or there'd be no work being done if I just push against a wall because there's no distance. Remember, the equation was uh, 
W equals F D. Well, if the displacement is zero, that's going to make the whole thing become zero. So watch out for that when you're doing the concept builder. Uh, for the same, so we'll use the same four examples here, but now in the second uh, trophy, we're looking for whether it gained or lost energy, which we've already talked about. But it also has you remember back to recognizing forces. So you have to identify what force is present here. Okay, so the baseball is being thrown upward uh, to knock the frisbee out of the tree. Uh, the baseball is being thrown upward. So we have the hand pushing. I'm going to leave out the word pushing. Maybe I'll just put P pushing up on the ball, leaving out the little words hand pushing up on the ball. Uh, the energy that's going to cause the the energy what's that going to do to the energy of the ball it is going to increase the energy of the ball the helicopter rising through the air at constant velocity as the blades spin the blades push down on the air but that's not going to make the helicopter move so it's the air pushing up on the blades the air pushing up on the uh, blades we could say on the helicopter okay um, and that's going to, again, increase the, in this case, the, in case the gravitational potential energy of the helicopter. Because the force is up and it's moving up. All right. Humpty Dumpty lands on the grass. What's the force on Humpty Dumpty? The grass is pushing up on We'll abbreviate Humpty Dumpty. We'll just call him HD. So uh, the, the force is pushing, uh, the grass is pushing up on Humpty Dumpty. The energy here, the grass is pushing up. Humpty Dumpty is moving down, coming to a stop. That is going to decrease the energy of Humpty Dumpty, in this case, the kinetic energy. And in our final example here, the car drives down a hill, applies the brakes, and comes to a stop. The force is, is friction. That's the type of force. We can write that here. Friction. And it's the friction of the road uh, pushing uh, uphill. I'll just say up, but uphill on the tires. Okay. Now there's also friction between the wheels and the brake pad. That's what's making there be force between the tires and the road. But since the tires are part of the car, the thing that's affecting the car is the road pushing uphill on the tires. That's going to bring our car to a stop. It's losing kinetic energy on its way downhill, which also means it's losing gravitational potential energy. And so that energy is decreasing as we put on the brakes and the car comes to a stop. All right, so that's our second trophy. Our third trophy uh, deals with energy transformation. We need to talk a little bit more before we get to some examples of that. So when work creates an increase, an increase in mechanical energy, that energy has to uh, come from somewhere. Something has to be giving its energy to the object. We'll learn later about the concept of conservation of energy, talk about why that has to be. But for right now, it gets its energy from somewhere. In this concept builder, it's always coming from uh, chemical energy when it's going to become some sort of mechanical energy. That chemical energy could be the food you ate and you're pushing on something, or it could be the energy gasoline going into some sort of a, a car or engine of some sort that's then pulling or pushing on something. So if you see work being done to create uh, energy, to increase the mechanical energy, create mechanical energy, it's coming from somewhere and it's coming from chemical energy in this concept builder. There are other ways you could get mechanical energy too, but in this case, they're all coming from chemical energy. When, when work creates a decrease in mechanical energy, when we have negative work being done, the energy must go somewhere. We can't just remove energy. It, it's always going to be in our universe. It's going to go somewhere. In this, in this uh, concept builder, they always call that dissipated energy. Okay, There are other places it could go again. But in this case, dissipated energy is what they have. For example, heat. In other words, it's turning into heat. 
what's really happening is the, as the objects are moving, like we see down here, the person pushing and there's a heat being created due to friction. The energy that was in the mechanical energy of this box is now in the mechanical energy of the molecules. But we don't really call it mechanical energy of the molecules because um, mechanical is the, the energy of things we can see. So it's the a microscopic kinetic energy here as the molecules start moving faster as they're getting bumped into. So that's but dissipated energy or heat is where that goes. So once again, when the en energy of a system decreases due to negative work, that means the energy turns into dissipated energy or heat. Finally, there's a question in which one type of mechanical energy turns into another, like if I uh, drop something, its gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy. If I lift something up, well, if I lift it up, if I throw something up, its kinetic energy turns into gravitational potential energy. We'll see lifting up on the next slide. So let's go through some examples here. The same examples again, baseball is being thrown upwards. So here we're talking about the, the point in time at which it's being thrown, not after it's left the person's hand. So at that point, uh, the energy that you have from the breakfast you ate is chemical energy, and that's where this starts. I'm just going to write chem, chemical energy, and that's turning into, uh, immediately it turns into the kinetic energy of the ball. That then, the kinetic energy turns into gravitational potentially as it moves up towards the frisbee. Helicopter rising at constant velocity through the air. This is chemical energy again, because it's positive energy. Energy is coming from somewhere. And I told you in the last slide, that's always going to be chemical energy. If things gaining energy, where did it come from? Chemical energy. Where did it come from? It came from the gasoline that the helicopter is using. Okay. Um, and what's that becoming here? Well, it's not getting any faster because it's going at constant velocity. So in this case, that's turning into gravitational potential energy or I believe this concept builder just says potential energy. Uh, Humpty Dumpty just landed on some grass. Well, he's slowing down, he's losing energy. So that means it's gonna turn into dissipated energy. For example, heat, dissipated, I'm gonna try and fit that in, there we go. Dissipated energy. Well, what was it to begin with? Well, when he hit the grass, that's when it's turning into dissipated energy. He was going pretty fast. And so that was kinetic energy. So kinetic energy uh, turns into dissipated energy. Um, Humpty Dumpty doesn't have it in a mechanical way anymore. Okay. Um, then a car driving down a hill applies the brakes and comes to a stop. In this case, we actually have two things going on. And I've met, as I mentioned before, we have kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy because we're still headed downhill. Okay, there aren't any in this concept builder that have two, but I thought you could handle an example like that. It helps you understand better. So we had kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. By the time these brakes bring this car to a stop, it does not have any of those things. Where did the energy go? It was dissipated. Energy, for example, heat. All right, I hope you learned a lot about how work affects energy. And you can see that as you work through the concept builder. Uh, have a good time doing your work. See you next time on the Scientific Adventures of Beardman.